Hi, we're Richard and Jackie from Early Retirement Wonderlust. We've always considered ourselves to be really positive people. And as we moved into early retirement, it was really important for us to be able to maintain that happiness. So what we've done in this video is brought together 17 things that we do on a daily basis that bring happiness and joy to our lives. Ultimately, everyone wants to be happy in their lives. And for us, it's really important for our mental health and well-being, particularly now that we're really retired. We think that we are really positive people, but it's really important when you're considering happiness to be really quite intentional about what you do. So what we've done is we've pulled together 17 things that we do over the course of every day that we think has a direct contribution to our overall happiness in life. One of the best and easiest ways of maintaining my happiness, I found, is just by practicing daily gratitude. I do that formally as part of my gratitude journal. So in the morning, I write down three things that I am really grateful for. And in the evening, I reflect back on the day and think what things I was grateful for in that day. So the things that we are grateful for could be something that's really small. So it might be the sight of the sunrise in the morning or the smell of the morning coffee or the little bit of peace that we have or it might be something more complex. So for instance, today we had a lovely lunch out with my mum, which is something that I am forever grateful for. Gratitude works on selective attention, and it's a basic principle that if you focus on good things and things that you are grateful for, you are more likely to notice good things that happen throughout the day. So it's a, just a really good, simple way of keeping your day positive. Even in our early retirement, not every day, goes quite as planned. Take today for example, it's absolutely chucking it down outside. If we were negative, we could be really grumpy about that. But what we decided to do was take the positives. We've had a bit of a chance to get the filming done that we wanted to do. I got the fire on at half past three in the afternoon and it's lovely and cozy and warm in here. And I'm just going to get my book out and have a lovely afternoon reading for the rest of the day. And we do find if we're really happy and positive when we meet other people and we share that positivity, it can't help but be infectious. Other people are really positive back to us. When we were working as teachers, one of the things that we taught our children was to just be really kind. Now, the reason we did that was that A, it makes someone else's day if you're kind to them, but B, there's also a feel-good factor of just being kind to people. At times, Jackie does look at me as if I've gone out when I'm overtly kind to shop workers and things like that, but just a really nice thank you to someone goes a long way in terms of them feeling better, and also it just has a lovely feel-good happiness factor in our own hearts. And actually, it's just really good manners to be nice to people. One of the things I really like at the start of the day is being really intentional about where I'm going to find moments of happiness during the course of the day. So if I know that I've got the opportunity to just have a moment of peace and quiet or an opportunity to get out into the countryside and have a walk, then that's really important for my happiness. And if I don't do any pre-thinking or pre-planning for that, it's not likely to happen. So thinking about where I can find that happiness at the start of the day is really important for me. And continuing on the theme of planning for opportunities for happiness, when we were working particularly, we used to always make sure that we had things that we could look forward to, whether it be something that we were going to do at the weekend, obviously planning our van life adventures, that really kept us motivated. It might just be planning what we were going to do that evening, where we were going to go for a stroll, if it was going to be sunny, where we were going to go to the gym, but we always had something that we were really looking forward to. And what's really important, I think, is that actually the planning and the anticipation of something evokes just as many happy feelings as actually going on the experience itself. And actually, now we're retired, I think that's just as important. We have lots of little plans of things that we're going to do in the day, but we've got some big plans for our holidays and trips, and we're so excited about that. One of the big contributing factors to our overall happiness, we think, is definitely to do with our physical activity and taking care of our body. 
a healthy body means a healthy mind and getting out and doing some physical activity is the best way to just improve your mood, improve your happiness and improve your well-being. And we firmly believe in that in our early retirement. Take this morning, for example, we've already said it's chucking it down, but we made sure that we just got out, went to see the lambs that have just started appearing in the dales just to give us that bit of physical activity because we didn't think we'd fit it in for the rest of the day. And as you'll have probably seen from all of our previous videos, we're real firm believers that we just need to get out into nature. Daylight and sunlight's good for us, being out in nature is good for us, and the best thing at the moment about being in the Yorkshire Dales is getting out in nature and it's lambing season, so they are just skipping around everywhere. It is gorgeous. You can't help but feel happier with that. I defy anyone who's feeling a little bit unhappy to go have a look at a lambing field <laughs> and not feel better at the end of that experience. If you've seen any of our previous videos, you will know that one of the things that we wanted to get out of early retirement was to continue our lifelong learning. And we think that challenge of learning new things, developing creative things, doing YouTube, for example, has really helped with our happiness. It is a challenge, but it does give you an absolute sense of fulfillment. At the moment, I'm battling hard with Duolingo and my French language skills are not seemingly improving very much, but I'm enjoying the process and I'm sticking with it and enjoying the challenge. Another thing that we think definitely contributes to our happiness is social communications. And most importantly, just getting to know our neighbours. We've had some really lovely coffees and chats with them since we've moved in here. And actually just on a wider level, whenever we're walking around the village, just getting to know the new people in our community, we really feel like we're starting to bed in, which has definitely contributed to our happiness. And I think one of our biggest fears going into early retirement was just to be socially isolated. And, you know, that's got to be a killer in terms of your happiness. So just making the positive steps to get out there and meet people has massively helped us. One of the things we've intentionally stopped doing is comparing ourselves to others because we cannot compare our lives with other people's lives. We have different values to other people. Um, and I'm not saying that our values are right and other people's values are wrong. They're just different and it's okay to be different. And just the same way, we can't compare our early retirement and the choices that we've made with the choices that other people make in terms of their early retirement and their retirement decisions. It is an entirely personal thing and what we are doing is right for us and we're happy that it's right for us and we're not gonna compare ourselves with others. I think something that both of us have got much better at in our early retirement is acknowledging our feelings and accepting that sometimes it's okay not to be okay and it's actually okay to tell each other that we're not okay with things and just because we're early retired stress doesn't go away we still have things that we do get stressed about but what we've got really good at doing is just talking about it chatting about it seeing how we can deal with it. One of the things I've really learned in early retirement is to be much more present. I think in my working life, I spent a lot of time thinking about things that had gone on in the past and mistakes perhaps that I'd made and I was worrying about or worrying about what the future would hold. And actually, one of the things I've learned is that life actually happens in the moment. So it's really important to try and be present in the moment to experience everything that the day has to offer because the moment is actually life and that's what makes up our whole life experience. There are days where things happen that do upset us or things that we worry about a little bit but we've really changed our frame of mind of how we think about that. So if something's happened and I'm mulling it over and I'm thinking that morning oh this is the worst thing in the world what's going to happen what we're going to do. So now I've reframed it and I sit there and think well, would this really matter in a week's time? Am I going to remember that I was really wound up or worried about this thing in a week's time? Will I think about it in a month's time? And when we've applied that train of thought, for most things, that worry has disappeared because it really wasn't that important. Linked to that, people will know that I absolutely love psychology and there is something in psychology called the stimulus response bond. In simple words, it means that in life, some things happen that you have absolutely no control over and the outcome of that event, you have absolutely no control over, the stimulus and the response. But there is a little gap in the middle where you have a choice as to how you are going to react to that situation. So as Jackie said, you could choose to think that it's the most cataclysmic thing that's ever happened to you in your life, or you could choose to say, 
this is not going to really affect me in the next week, the next month or the next year. And that gap between the stimulus and response is the only thing that you can control. So thinking about life like that, it is really just trying to control the things that you can actually control. This next point I think was probably more relevant when we were working, but it is still relevant in our early retirement. And that is to take the first step. And what we mean by that is there are things that you really don't want to do sometimes. Um, and you put it off and you procrastinate, and I'm a great procrastinator. But actually, once you've just done that first step, once you've actually just got on with it, it's amazing how good you feel that you've just done it. And before you know it, you've dealt with it, it's gone. It's no longer a problem. You took that first step, it's gone. We used to talk about it in management speak as eating the frog. So <laughs> the, problem, the problem is a small, tiny frog. And actually, you want to be able to eat that frog because the longer you leave that first step of action, the greater that frog is going to grow and get slimier and more unappealing. So just eat the frog, get it done early. And actually, it's a good way of safeguarding your happiness. One of the things I found is really important in maintaining my happiness, particularly in early retirement, is just learning to loosen my grip on life. Throughout my entire working career, I was a bit of a control freak. I was a bit of a planner. And that's a hard habit to break. But for life to be able to be really fulfilling and really happy, I just need to loosen my grip on it, accept that I can't control everything and just see things develop as they develop. And we just want to leave you with one final thought. We bumped into someone when we were in America. It was a person that was hiking the Continental Divide and he was a fount of all knowledge to us. And he said something to us that just really resonated to both of us. He said, if you have no massive expectations of what you're going to do in that day, then you will never be disappointed. And we start every day with that. Richard might plan, he might do things that he thinks will add to his day and his happiness. But actually, if we have no massive expectations of what's going to happen in that day, we aren't disappointed. And quite often we are absolutely surprised at what the day brings. And that almost spiritual view from a through hiker that was walking three and a half thousand miles across America was just, yeah, life changing for us. So these are just some of the things that we try and do in our days to make sure that our days are as happy and as fun filled as possible. And hopefully there might just be the odd one or two things that might resonate with you like Hippie did with us. One of the things that we do find, however, is to just be really intentional about looking after your happiness and making sure that it remains a priority in your day. So that's it from us. See you later. Bye.